the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show. I'm excited about this one. We're going to be talking game predictions, how many games the 49ers are going to win, go through the schedule, and figure it out. What's the ending record going to be for the San Francisco 49ers in 2023? This is always one of my favorite things to do because you kind of got get to look forward at what these games could possibly be and how many the 49ers can win. Uh, just so you guys know, last year I predicted the 49ers would go 12-5. and 5. 49ers ended up going 13 and four did better than I predicted. Of course, I think a lot of us had the Kansas city chiefs game as a possible loss last year. And that ended up being the case, but finding losses for the 49ers, when you see how good their roster is, can be extremely difficult. And so when you're going through, you have to try to take a lot of things into account and figure out exactly, you know, which games are going to be tougher. You take into account who's coming off a buy, which games are away, what the weather is going to be like, uh, the battle of attrition, you know, how many really good football teams have you played in a row? I think it's extremely important to go through all of those things and try to figure out the best outcome, but it's just a lot of fun to do. Will it happen exactly the way I predict? Probably not. Uh, it takes a lot to be able to predict these games consistently, and it's going to be tough, but getting in the general ballpark of how many games the 49ers win is the overall goal in this, and talking through it is a lot of fun because... Then we get to kind of go over the, you know, the matchups and things like that that make a lot of sense as we go through. So I'm going to bring up the schedule here. Uh, as you can see, there's the schedule along the side. And we're just going to go game by game, you know, and predict who's going to win and who's going to lose. I'll give a little bit of commentary on each one. Now, the 49ers start at Pittsburgh. Uh, that's an early 10 a.m. game. And the 10 a.m. games always make me a little bit nervous because traditionally West Coast teams don't play great at 10 a.m., However, under Kyle Shanahan, the 49ers do pretty good. Some of that is they normally group up these two matchups together. They stay on the East Coast, uh, and they usually galvanize and win. Um, it doesn't always work out. Last year, the 49ers were able to beat Carolina but lost to Atlanta. But in 2020, they beat both New York football teams. So it does work out for the 49ers at time. And for whatever reason, Kyle Shanahan, the way that they go about traveling to these football games, they get the players right. And then they're able to do a pretty good job in the games. Now, Pittsburgh Steelers, they've got a wealth of talent. And they've got a young quarterback in Kenny Pickett. He's an exciting young player. they got a great running back in Najee Harris. And then you look over on the defensive side of the ball, and there's a who's who of talent, including T.J. Watt, which is going to be a lot of trouble for the 49ers. You look at the, the quarterbacks that the 49ers have, and you ha have three potential possibilities. Without us knowing exactly who's going to be quarterback, it does make picking these games a little bit more difficult. Uh, but I think when you look at the overall roster, the 49ers definitely have a better roster. They have Christian McCaffrey, which makes it easier for any of these quarterbacks. Plus, you throw in the fact that more than likely the 49ers will be healthy to start the season, which means healthy Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, tremendous amounts of talent. Question marks about Mike McGlinchey. Uh, him against TJ Watt could be something to, interesting to watch in this game. But if he lines up on the other side against Trent Williams, it's it's game set and match right. Trent, that's just how good he is. So I think though there are some matchups that make this game a little bit more uh, nerve-wracking for 49er fans than it would have potentially been last year. He's on the fact Mike Tomlin's such a great coach, and it could make a tough matchup. But in this game, I think the 49ers just have too much. I think they're healthy. I think you get execution because you have so many returning players, and I think they're just a little bit farther along than Pittsburgh is. I think this game was in the middle of the year, and Pittsburgh was you know kind of rolling with Kenny Pickett. It might make it even more difficult, but I think the 49ers are able to get a win in this football game and go 1-0. and Next up, they're going to travel to Los Angeles. Normally, going back-to-back -back travel games would be tough. You'd travel all the way to Pittsburgh and then back home and then away again. That's not exactly what you want. But in this case, you're traveling a little more than an hour flight down to Los Angeles, if it's even an hour. And you're going to be playing in a stadium you're completely comfortable with, SoFi Stadium. 
It's going to be early on in the season, so you're going against a healthy Matthew Stafford, Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup. Good team. Not as much this year. I mean, they have definitely lost a lot of talent. They've traded away players. They've had to get away from some of their defensive studs. Bobby Wagner's not there anymore. So they have definitely uh, downgraded on defense. They've downgraded on offense as well as far as talent. I think early on in the season, it'll be a little bit tougher to play them just because they're going to make they're going to have a healthy Matthew Stafford and other players are going to be healthy along this team. Uh, as the season progresses, if they lose anyone, they have zero depth on their roster. I think the 49ers are going to outclass and outmatch the Los Angeles Rams. SoFi is going to be lit up with tons of red. And I think the general manager coming out and telling the Los Angeles Rams fans that they're in the middle of a rebuild means more Rams fans will be willing to sell their tickets, which means more 49er fans there and more likelihood of it being a extra home game. Though the 49ers are only supposed to have eight home games this season, it might be nine with this game here. And I think the 49ers win, and they defeat the Los Angeles Rams, and they improve to 2-0. and Next up is going to be a primetime game on uh, Sunday night, or I'm sorry, Thursday night football against the Giants. So here's where it gets interesting. You're at home. You've had a short week because you just played the Rams. But, you know, how did that Rams game go? Were you able to finish them off early, get some of your players there, this is the first game where you start questioning, can the 49ers beat the New York Giants? The Giants are going to be in Arizona the week before playing the Cardinals. So more than likely, they'll stay on the West Coast and then play the 49ers because of the short week. So there's not a huge advantage as far as travel. The advantage you have is the Giants won't be staying in their own bed, you know, at home and comfortable that way. Uh, but as far as adjusting to the time, they should be pretty equipped to do so, especially with this being a night game. I think the 49ers have a you know good players that can match up against the Giants, but Brian Dabble's a very good football coach, and we've seen the things that his offense could do. The defense has been improving as well. So the Giants are definitely a formidable team, a playoff caliber football team, and the 49ers are going to have to go in there and handle Daniel Jones and this roster. Uh, the thing is, can the 49ers do it? Yes. It's the first home game. It's going to be absolutely fired up. The crowd's going to be electric. I think the 49ers are going to have a really tough game in this one against the New York Giants. This is the first time that I had to think either way. You know, which way could it go? When it came down to it, I went into individual matchups. So this is one of those things where if the 49ers are healthy, uh, I think they match up too well against the Giants, and the Giants end up not being able to win. If injuries are one are against the 49ers, the Giants could definitely win this game. I think it's, that, it's closer uh, because of the way the schedule played out than we would like to think. I think the Giants are up-and-coming team. I think the 49ers are the the studs in, in the NFC, though. And I think the 49ers do win this game. I think it's going to be a close one. If I had to put a score prediction on it, I think it would be something like 27-24. to 24 49ers get the victory. I think Christian McCaffrey and Debo end up being too much for the offense. Next up is the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, and the Arizona Cardinals will be coming to Levi Stadium. This is not a great roster. They're not going to have Kyler Murray. They are definitely rebuilding under Coach Gannon, and, and, and we'll see what this team ends up looking like as far as roster. They have definitely had a decent draft. I thought their draft class was pretty good, but that is for the future. They're going to have to make some decisions at several positions, and I don't think Arizona is going to be ready for this football game. I think the 49ers are going to completely outmatch them and I think the 49ers, as long as they don't play down to level of competition, should have no problems beating the Arizona Cardinals. If they come in, they take the game lightly, they play down to Arizona, uh, you never know what can happen. But I think because it's in at Levi Stadium, Arizona Cardinals definitely don't have the talent to be able to match up with the 49ers. I think the 49ers roll in this game and improve to 4-0 with a win over the Cardinals. The 49ers then are at home versus the Cowboys, the end of the three-game uh, homestand and they're going to be playing on Sunday night football the Cowboys a you know playoff team the 49ers have eliminated them two years in a row they've made a little bit of changes on their offense Ezekiel Elliott is gone uh, but I think you could see the difference in the offense when again went against San Francisco last year without Amari Cooper Cooper was definitely a player the 49ers struggled with especially when he played in the slot and was able to defeat K1 Williams that Amari Cooper was gone. He was in Cleveland, and the San Francisco 49ers didn't have K1 Williams anymore. So there will be a little bit of question marks as far as slot corner. 
this season early? Will Isaiah Oliver be able to be that player and step up? Will it be a Sam Womack? I, I think those are always the case when you're playing the Cowboys with them having so many good receivers. But we've seen the 49ers be able to shut guys down. We've seen them be able to hinder C.D. Lamb and, and pester him. So I think as long as the 49ers are able to stop the run game, keep Dak Prescott on his heels, the 49ers can win. They're going to be highly motivated to win this football game. The energy is going to be absolutely electric at Levi Stadium. I just don't think the Cowboys match up well against the 49ers. I think the 49ers will do a very good job. Another key matchup in this will be Micah Parsons, of course, against Colton McKivitz. Uh, but I think Colton McKivitz can handle himself. Pretty good passing grade last year. I think the 49ers just have too many weapons. As long as they're healthy, I think they get the win and they beat the Dallas Cowboys. And you're sitting there and you're thinking, hey, what's going on? You have the 49ers 5-0. and Yeah, that's true. And, you know, you would, like I said earlier, when you're looking for losses, it's not always easy to find losses. But you have to just try to do the best you can to, you know, go through these games. So the next up, the 49ers travel in week six to Cleveland. And this is one of those 10 a.m. games. These ones definitely make me nervous. It is a part of a two-game homestand and potentially when the 49ers could stay in Youngstown, Ohio. If they decide to stay there and then play the Minnesota Vikings the next week, uh, you don't know exactly what mindset you're going into. You throw in the fact that Cleveland has made some moves, uh, bringing in Zadarius Smith to rush opposite of Miles Garrett, and that sounds pretty formidable. They've spent a lot of money on their defense and i definitely think they've improved deshaun watson will be in year two how much of that rust will he have knocked off they're a pretty talented football team and it's an interesting matchup this is i i thought about it with the giants giving the 49ers a loss and this one definitely had me going back and forth i was going between different players different matchups trying to find out hey is this a spot where the 49ers could lose i do think this is a spot the 49ers could lose um, but I do think that they're going to come out and get it done. I think this is one that could go either way. I was less confident about this game, and it's nothing in particular about how great Cleveland is. I think they're a solid roster. I think it's more so that this is kind of the time the Niners have been through a lot of really big games that came off a huge homestand, and Cleveland's coming off a bye. So they're going to have time to prepare. I think it's going to be very competitive, but I think the 49ers will win in a close matchup and defeat the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, stay undefeated, which 6-0 and to start a season. We've seen the 49ers in 2019 start 8-0, so we know it's not out of the question for them to do. And then in Week 7, they're traveling to Minnesota to play the Minnesota Vikings on Monday night. Minnesota Vikings last year had a huge stretch of games where they won. Kurt Cousins was playing really well. Justin Jefferson is an absolutely dynamic player. But you have question marks about Dalvin Cook, and Dalvin Cook is a huge part of of that run game and a part of that offense. He's the reason he makes you uh, have to stay honest to the run. Without him, are they as good at running the football? No, they're not. Are they as good with you know catching the football in the backfield? No. Uh, so question marks about Dalvin Cook, I think definitely you know make me raise my eyebrows. Uh, Adam Thielen has moved on. Yeah, of course, they, they continue to bring in talented players, but they're young players. Jefferson's the best wide receiver in the league. So they have some very talented players, but you just traded away to Darius Smith. Uh, Harrison Smith is getting old. There, there's just a lot of things you got to see with this Minnesota team. I think they're almost bridging the gap between trying to stay competitive and rebuilding. Uh, you throw in the fact it's Monday Night Football and Kirk Cousins seems to struggle pretty mightily when it comes to primetime games. I think that gives advantage 49ers. They probably just had a tough game against Cleveland, but... Because it was a 10 a.m. start, and more than likely they're going to stay in Young Youngstown, Ohio, they're not going to lose any time. They're going to have full preparation for the Minnesota Vikings. I think the 49ers pull this one out. I think uh, they're just too much for Minnesota in their current state, and I think the 49ers beat the Minnesota Vikings and improve to 7-0. and oh. Next up is going to be the Bengals, and it's at home. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals are going to come in on a Sunday game. And it's going to be a, a really huge matchup. The, the matchup they had in 2021 with Brandon Ayuk scoring in overtime, a scoring a touchdown down the sidelines to win. It was a spectacular game. Almost got a rematch in the Super Bowl. Bengals made it. 49ers weren't able to beat the Rams. But it was a huge matchup and a great game to watch. I think these two teams are fun. You've got so much 
talent on both sides between Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. Uh, spectacular talent on both sides of the football. And I think this one's going to be really tough for the 49ers. Cincinnati Bengals are coming off a bye week, and the 49ers are coming off a long stay on the road and a Monday night game against Minnesota. I think this game, in a in a normal setting, and a you know even on a neutral field, would be a toss up game at this point in the season. And I think the 49ers lose their first game of the season to the Cincinnati Bengals. It's the one I had marked as the toughest matchup on the entire 49ers schedule because of team, also with circumstance, them coming off the bye. I just think they get to the 49ers and they're able to win this football game. Next up will be the Jacksonville Jaguars. The 49ers will be coming off their bye. The Jaguars will be coming off their bye. Jaguars improved mightily last year, a lot better. Travis Etienne did really, really good. Trevor Lawrence looked like he was coming into his own, and they have a lot of really good talent on the outside. They've definitely added some more uh, playmakers as well, and we've seen that defense be able to get after the quarterback. So this is going to be a fun matchup. Trent Baalke, the former general manager of the 49ers, is running the Jacksonville Jaguars these days. Uh, but you've seen them take a huge step forward as they got a new coach last year and, and Doug Peterson. And I think the Jaguars continue to take a step forward. And this game is not a give-me game, but this is a must-win when you're coming off your bye, especially when losing to the Bengals. You've seen the 49ers lose a game against Kansas City and then kind of galvanize them as they took on the next part of the season. I think they come off this bye. I think the way that Kyle Shannon is able to scheme up offense, I think this is kind of when the 49ers will hit another stride. They had that stretch where they won so many games in a row, and I think that loss against the Bengals will kind of hit them a little bit, and then they'll get right back on their feet. And I think they defeat the Jacksonville Jaguars in this football game. I wouldn't be surprised to see the 49ers win by double digits in that game, even though Jaguars are very good. Next up, the 49ers travel back home to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay's coming in with Baker Mayfield as the starting quarterback. I think it's a major rebuild there in Tampa Bay. They've definitely lost some players. They're not as talented. There's no Tom Brady. Uh, and that roster got absolutely thumped by the 49ers last year. Brock Purdy picked them apart. 49ers were up 35-0. It was an absolute shellacking. And I think that Tampa Bay coming all the way across country to play the San Francisco 49ers, 49ers are just too good. They're going to absolutely overwhelm Tampa Bay in this game. And I think they win. I don't think it'll be as bad as last year for the mere fact. I don't think the... The 49ers, I think they were extremely motivated going against Tom Brady, but I do think they handle this game pretty well and get a nice victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this matchup. So next up will be the Seattle Seahawks, and this game is Thanksgiving night. So a tough, tough game traveling to Seattle. Short week. You play. Luckily, you were at home, so you're just traveling up to the Pacific Northwest. So it's not that far of a travel for the 49ers, but short week to prepare for Seattle. And you've got a tough matchup. Last year, both games against Seattle were competitive. Geno Smith coming into his second year as full starter. They've done a really good job of revamping the running game for Seattle. And they've drafted extremely well on defense, especially. They've added edge rushers. They've added defensive linemen that can get after the quarterback. And they've added cornerbacks and safeties. Uh, Jamal Adams should be healthy and back. So they got an extra defensive end. Just kidding. Uh, but not really. But anyways, they're going to have a really good you know, roster coming up against the 49ers. I think it's an interesting game, though, because Seattle, even though they keep drafting these players, don't always match up well against what the 49ers do. Bringing back Bobby Wagner is great for the run game, but I wonder how he's going to be able to handle guarding Christian McCaffrey in open space. They don't really have anyone that could do that. If they try it with Jamal Adams, McCaffrey will absolutely smoke him in the open field. So McCaffrey's the real problem. When we've seen it, a couple of times when Bobby Wagner tried to stop McCaffrey. When McCaffrey was with Carolina, he couldn't. And then when he was with the 49ers last year, Wagner with the Rams couldn't stop him. So I think that's a matchup problem for Seattle. I think the emphasis on getting this game and getting it won is going to be huge for the 49ers. I think the 49ers eke this one out. And I think they end up beating the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle, which is never easy to do, but the 49ers get a W uh, and get on a little bit of a run here, and they're going to need to because next up for them is the Philadelphia Eagles. This is that stretch. Weeks 12 through 14, Seahawks, Eagles, Seahawks. 
And when you're looking at this schedule face value and you see the 49ers just played the Seahawks on Thursday night football, you're thinking, oh, that's a tough matchup. They're probably going to lose to Philly. Uh, but they're going to be playing on a 11, ga- 11 days. They're going to have to prepare for Philadelphia. And then Philadelphia is coming off two extremely tough games. They play Kansas City, then they play Buffalo before they play the 49ers. I think this is a nice game to set up for the 49ers. The 49ers are going to be extremely motivated. All the things that Debo Samuel said, the 49ers felt like Brock Purdy uh, would have been healthy. They would have been playing in the Super Bowl. That They would have been able to beat the Eagles. The fact the NFL put this at week 13, Brock Purdy number 13, uh, I think it's an interesting thing. I think this is going to be a good game. I think, you know, Philadelphia lost some players, but they definitely added players through the draft, through free agency. They've done a good job, and they still have their core there. Uh, Very talented roster. Probably, if it's not the most talented roster, it's right there with the 49ers. These two teams are definitely the cream of the crop when it comes to the NFC, but I think the 49ers are going to win this game. I think them playing those two tough games against Kansas City and Buffalo uh, make it a little bit tougher. And I think the 49ers having 11 days to prepare is going to help the 49ers as well. I think they're going to be extremely motivated, and this could be for the number one seed in the NFC. But I think the 49ers want to prove that, hey, last year was a fluke. We could beat you. Uh, So I think the 49ers do beat the Philadelphia Eagles, but I think it's going to be extremely tight. I think this game is going to come down to the wire. The 49ers score late to win that game. Next up, they travel home to play the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks will be coming off their second consecutive Thursday night football game. So they're going to have 11 days to prepare for the 49ers. This time it's at Levi Stadium. But I think that this one's going to be tough for the 49ers. You just had an emotional victory against Seattle, an emotional victory against Philadelphia, and you've went on another stretch of wins after your loss to the Bengals. I think Seattle uh, comes into Levi Stadium and catches a kind of tired San Francisco 49ers team a team that has definitely been through the ringer. And I think Seattle ends up getting a victory. I think it it won't be easy. I think the 49ers will hang in there as long as they can. But I think the Seattle Seahawks will defeat the 49ers at home in that week 14 matchup. But the Niners end up going two and one through that stretch, which is very important for the 49ers to do. Next up, the San Francisco 49ers are playing at Arizona And I think this is a a game the 49ers bounce back. Kyler Murray should be back. And that team should be doing a lot better at this point in the season. But I just think the 49ers overwhelm them. They'll come off that game against the Seattle Seahawks. And they'll be motivated to win a divisional game. Because winning it's so important for the 49ers to win not only the division, but to potentially get home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Get that bye week you want in the first round. And I think the four years come out motivated, bounce back, and get a big, big victory against the Arizona Cardinals in Week 15. Next up, the 49ers play on Christmas Day against the Baltimore Ravens. And it's Christmas night. Uh, the Ravens come to town, and they're going to be bringing their studded, uh, star-studded roster. And it's, it's pretty good. They've got a lot of really talented football players at a quarterback that's going to be very, very difficult to stop. And I think that's where... I'm interested to see if the Niners can him up Lamar Jackson. If we were going to have Drake Jackson, Nick Bosa. You know, we had some speed on the outside, linebackers that can track and run. But the Baltimore Ravens added Odell Beckham Jr. So they have some talent and wide in wide, at wide receiver on the outside, and they have a dangerous quarterback. The 49ers traditionally don't do great against mobile quarterbacks. So keeping him in the pocket is definitely going to be an emphasis. That means changing up the way you rush the quarterback. You're not as aggressive against a runner. So that means you have to be uh, better on the back end. Your safeties and corners have to be able to stay with these guys longer. Just so the mere fact you don't let Lamar Jackson beat you with his legs. You also run a tremendous amount of zone against one of these kinds of quarterbacks. So if Lamar gets it going, this one could be tough. I think that the 49ers do lose this football game. I think the Baltimore Ravens get a win here on Christmas Day. Not what I wanted. That's not the present I'm looking for. Uh, but I think you, when you're looking for losses, this is one of those games that you could potentially lose just when you're seeing the matchup of Baltimore. They always come in with a good defense. They're always good on special teams. And you have the X factor with Lamar Jackson. If you told me the Niners were going to win this game, I would completely you know, go with you. That's okay. I don't think that's you know far-fetched at all. I think the Niners could win it. I just thought this was one of those ones that it made sense 
that the 49ers could definitely lose because of Lamar Jackson. Next up, it's it's New Year's Eve, and the 49ers are playing another one of those 10 a.m. start times. I have a feeling by the time we get to this part of the season, this one could be flexed at least to a different start time, maybe the game of the week, uh, a 125 Pacific start time, which would be better for the 49ers. But you're playing the Washington Commanders. They're going to have a young quarterback in Sam Howell. If he's still healthy, it means he's been through a lot of football games. And, of course, it could be Jacoby Brissett, who's the backup. So question marks at quarterback for them. We don't know what Howell's going to be, but they still have a very good defense. Will Chase Young still be on the team by then? That's a question mark. He could be traded at the trade deadline for sure, or even post June 1. So we don't know what's going to happen there. So there are some things about the commanders you know, that you, we still have to figure out. Now, if their season's going well, there's a potential you know, for them to be a very tough team. If their season's going bad, Ron Rivera could be out the door and this team uh, could definitely be in a state of flux when the 49ers play them in week 17. So 10 a.m., always nervous, but I think it gets flexed. Uh, because I do think the Commanders are going to be in the playoff hunt. I don't know if they'll actually make it, but I think they'll be really, really tight to getting in there. So this one's going to be fun for the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan always likes beating the Commanders, and I think the roster for the 49ers is set up to do so. I don't believe Chase Young will still be a Washington Commander at the time. I think he will have gotten moved. Where will he be? I think that's a good question. Uh, but I think with everything considered, even with Chase Young on the team, I think the 49ers defeat the Commanders in this football game and pick up their 13th W of the year in Week 17. In Week 18, the 49ers play the Rams at home, finishing it off against Levi Stadium. This game could mean home field advantage in the playoffs, so the Niners have to be motivated to play it. I'm sure they want to be able to get up early and be able to win. The Rams will probably be in a state of flux, probably sitting some of their starters uh, and some of their older veterans. How Who's healthy? I think that's a question mark. But we could see Stetson Bennett under center at this moment for the Rams. And I think the 49ers are just going to go in there, overwhelm them, do what they need to do, and make sure they get this win to secure home field advantage in the playoffs and get a number one seed. You got to win the division. You got to win divisional matchups. This is one of those games. I don't think it's very hard you know, to see that the 49ers are just a better roster right now. The Rams are definitely rebuilding. They're getting better, but they're not there yet. And they've, they're trying to bridge the gap between being competitive and rebuilding. And I don't think this is the time they do it. 49ers win this football game and they go 14 and three. The so last year I picked the 49ers to go 12 and five. They ended up 13 and four. This time I picked them to go 14 and three. We'll see if they're able to, you know, do better at it than that. You know, I mean, it, it 49ers definitely have enough talent to win every game they're a part of. They'll probably be favored in all but one, depending on how the season plays out. So it's very talented roster means you're going to find a lot of games they win. Uh, I think everyone has kind of seen that Bengals game as the biggest opportunity for loss. I seen other opportunities for loss. Of course, the New York Giants, that first one, I just think home game means Niners win. I think the trip to Cleveland, also early start time, them coming off a bye, that could be a loss. That could easily move it to 13 and four. I think those are potential. And then when you're in that stretch of weeks 12 to 14, you know, the you could have a loss against the Seahawks or the Eagles, an extra one. Um, so I think the 49ers have some tough stretches. This is best case scenario. I think the 49ers go 14 and three. And I think they'd be really, really excited about that spot because you could probably get home field advantage and then get into the playoffs. So yeah, I'm really excited about the 49ers schedule. I think it had, it ended up matching up pretty good for what, you know, they were really looking for. Um, of course, anytime you're, you're playing against these, these teams, anything can happen. Teams can show up and be better than you ever anticipated. Uh, but you know, what do you think about the 49ers going 14 and three? Do you think that's possible? Uh, what was your, you know, prediction for the, the 49ers in this season, you know, or do you think in more like 10 and seven or, you thinking, hey, they're they're not going to lose any games. They're going to go undefeated, sixteen and one. Well, you know, what's your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm really curious. Like the video. Really appreciate everyone that's liking the videos and helping push it out there to other uh, people that are looking for this 49ers content. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does a lot for me. It helps you know, trigger me out, put me out into that algorithm that youtube can put it out to more people i really appreciate it it means a lot and i want to thank everyone for watching this episode picking the 49ers games 
way too early, but picking the 49ers games uh, for the 2023 season. I have them going 14 and three. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to have lots more content coming up on the channel all week, but until next time, stay safe and remember the right way is always the 49ers way.